Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to the latest part of my bookshelf tour. That's right, I have no idea what episode we're on. So, we're just going to roll with it, and I'm going to jump straight in. So, we're getting started with William Golding, and this is Lord of the Flies. Obviously, sort of classic, or contemporary classic, I don't know what you'd call it, but a, a novel that a lot of people have to read at school. I didn't have to read it at school, picked it up off my own back, but absolutely loved it. Classic desert island survival story with some sort of uh, I guess societal politics chucked in there as well what will a bunch of school kids do if you abandon them on a desert island it's, it's like a precursor to battle royale in that in that respect then we have a William Goldman not Golding Goldman and this is the Princess Bride one of my favorite movies of all time it's one of the few where I prefer the movie to the book but it's probably just because I was raised on the movie and I've I've only read the book once, I think, in my early 20s. Did enjoy it, but, you know, I, I was picturing all the characters in this as the actors. Okay, then we're moving on to Dave Gorman. So Dave Gorman is a, a British comedian. This is actually Dave Gorman with Danny Wallace. So Danny Wallace is his roommate. That's Danny Wallace there. He wrote Yes Man, which was then turned into a film with Jim Carrey in it. That basically had very little to do with what the actual book was about. But um, yeah, he, he used to live with Dave Gorman and this is Are You Dave Gorman? This is like the first adventure he went on. Dave Gorman very much sort of pioneered the art of, I guess, mixing like, of, of like comedy adventures is what I would call it. So in this one, he tries to meet 54 other people called Dave Gorman. So that's one for every card in the deck plus the two jokers. And this happened, they were both getting drunk. And Dave Gorman was like, I'm sure there's a footballer called Dave Gorman. And Danny Wallace was like, bet you can't meet 54 other Dave Gormans. And he was like, you're on. And they ended up traveling 25,000 miles. And it's also a, like a documentary as well. Fun fact, if you go on my like older videos, the very first video uploaded to my channel, in breach of copyright, is a segment from a Dave Gorman TV show where he followed his horoscope for 40 days and 40 nights. And uh, it's a very funny clip. I'll leave it at that. In fact, I'll link to that below. You can check it out. Then we have Dave Gorman, America Unchained. So this is when he basically went to America and tried to travel from coast to coast using only kind of mom and pop stores. So uh, he didn't want to use any chain stores. We get the moment, for example, he's there for Thanksgiving and the only place that's open is Walmart. And obviously that's a chain store, so he can't go into Walmart. So he's just sitting there being like, I am hungry. And uh, yeah, I don't want to say too much more because I don't want to don't want to spoil it for you. But um, very much worth reading if you if you want. It's kind of like a rediscovery of that forgotten America, you know. Here we have Dave Gorman's Google Whack Adventure with part of the cover missing. Oh, okay. How am I going to explain this? So a Google Whack is basically when you enter two different dictionary words into Google and you only have one result. So do we? Ha I think spatula de numon was an example of a Google Whack at the time. Although if you Google it now, obviously it won't be because it was in this book. So people have written about the book and added it to a web page. The web page has been crawled and it's no longer a Google Whack. In fact, I don't even know if you can really find Google Whacks anymore because this was probably 10, 15 years ago now. But uh, yeah, basically what he did is he was going from person to person. So he'd get somebody to find him two Google Whacks and then he'd contact the webmasters of those sites, go and meet those people, and then get them to find him two more Google Wax and kind of go on from there. Okay, moving on from that, we have Rob Grant backwards. So Rob Grant is one half of Grant Naylor, the writing duo behind Red Dwarf, the cult classic sci-fi. And, uh, well, it's not sci-fi really, it's a uh, cult comedy sci-fi. I don't even know if you'd call it a classic. I mean, the first episode aired before I was born, so I guess it's fairly classic. But, um, yeah, Rob Grant is one half of that writing duo, and this is a Red Dwarf novel. This is presumably after Doug Naylor was like, I don't want to do any more. And then we have Rob Grant Fat, and this is actually a signed copy that my dad got me from Forbidden Planet. There we go. And um, this is basically about a point at which in the future it becomes illegal to be fat. That's all I'm going to say. Didn't actually rate this book too well, but uh, it's signed, so there's that. All right, and then we have Jen Green, and this is Tutankhamun's tomb. Uncover the secrets and treasures of ancient Egypt. It's got pop-ups. Let me try and find a pop-up. Look, it's, a, it's got pop-up pyramid. And there's wax coming off this, because this used to be below where I kept my candles. But yeah. And we got some John Green from Jen Green to John Green. So we have 
Looking for Alaska. We have The Fault in Our Stars. And we have Turtles All the Way Down. And this one was actually sent to me by Katie from Kit Kats Can Read. So shout out to you again, Katie. Thanks for sending it to me. My favourite of those has probably been Looking for Alaska, to be honest. I know not many people like that one. Or people either love or hate that one, I think. And people have a lot of problems with Alaska, which I, I agree with. The Fault in Our Stars, I didn't particularly didn't particularly enjoy that one, but then I don't like romance in novels. So, from there we move on to Graham Greene, who is one of my most read authors. He will get listed a lot when I talk about my favourite authors. And the rest of this video is all going to be Graham Greene. So we'll start with this big old bind up. I don't even remember where I got this. It's really nice. It's got Graham Greene on the inside cover look. Um, printed by Heinemann. Let's see. This edition first published in 1977. And this brings together The Heart of the Matter, Stamble Train, A Burnt Out Case, The Third Man, The Quiet American, Loser Takes All, and The Power and the Glory. Obviously, The Power and the Glory is one of his Catholic novels. The Heart of the Matter is probably one of his most well-known, uh, other than Brighton Rock, perhaps. A Burnt Out Case, that takes part in a leper colony. The Quiet American is one of my favourites. It's like an espionage, but also kind of like a... At times, it's comedic, I think. I don't know. I don't know whether it's supposed to be, but it made me laugh at times. And um, I used to have some of these as individual books, but basically when I got this big bind up, I thought I might as well just keep this, you know, try and save some bookshelf space. We have here a gun for sale. This is a fairly rare copy, I would imagine. It looks quite old. First published in 1936, and this is from 1947. You can tell it's kind of kind of old. And uh, yeah, a gun for sale, basically. Yeah, as it sounds, somebody hires a, a hired gun. Here we have A Sort of Life. So this is uh, like autobiography, basically. Let's see what it says here. Uh, buh, buh, buh. Yeah, so it's a companion for Ways of Escape, another of his. It combines reticence with candor and reveals brilliantly and compellingly the genesis of a life lived and an art obsessed by the dangerous edge of things. So there we go. A World of My Own. This is a really interesting one. This is a dream diary. So he, like, you can see here, they're not necessarily super long entries. And um, it's actually really interesting and really well written. You have here, for example, this is what he, like, his notes from when he originally woke up. And I don't know, this is just something interesting about reading other people's dreams. I might do something similar myself. I actually, fun fact, I never used to have dreams. Well, when I was a kid, I used to have loads of dreams. And then when I kind of became mid to late teens, I sort of stopped having dreams. And recently they've been coming back and I've been having them most nights. So I might start writing them down and see if I can do something with them. I once wrote an entire book of short stories based upon my dreams, but it's not very good. It was when I was first getting into writing, you know. Here we have Brighton Rock. This is one of his most famous. It's about a gangster in Brighton called Pinky. And he basically falls in love with uh, a woman called Ida, Ida Arnold. And... Um, there's a movie adaptation of this on Netflix that I watched recently as well, which was very good. But um, Brighton Rock is one of his most well-known, set in Brighton as well. So, yeah. Here we have British dramatists, Graham Greene. What even is this one? I don't remember this one. I think this is just literally him writing about, yeah, like various British dramatists. So, like, here we have Ben Johnson. Uh, we have Inside the Red Bull Playhouse, Clerkenwell, 1672. So it's not about the energy drink, just to clarify. So yeah, this is all about literally British dramatists from the, the day of Shakespeare and whatnot. Here we have Collected Essays. I finished reading this one recently as one of my bedtime books. So I probably won't say too much because it's been referenced in my wrap-ups. I will say it read better than his letters because at least the essays are kind of complete and they're not fragmentary. You understand, you know, you've got to start a, be a, mid a beginning, a middle and an end. And... Uh, yeah, it was interesting to get to get to know him as a person a bit more, get to know his thoughts on world events. He also talked about some other authors who were contemporary to him in it. And while it's not necessarily something you're going to want to read if you're not a big Graham Greene fan, I personally really enjoyed it. Here we have Dr. Fisher of Geneva or The Bomb Party. This is one of the ones I read slightly more recently than the others. I basically binged on most of his novels back in the day. And so I now I know I don't have that many left. So I've been kind of doing them a bit more slowly. But this is kind of kind of humorous, I guess. Uh, let me read you the blurb. Oh, me, I'm awake. What are you talking about? Dr. Fisher despises the human race. 
when the notorious toothpaste millionaire decides to hold his own deadly version of the Book of Revelations, Green opens up a powerful vision of the limitless greed of the rich. Black comedy and painful satire combine in a totally compelling novel. Here we have England Made Me. I honestly cannot remember this one. It's been too long since I've read this one. So I'm not, not even going to try and explain it to you. But yeah, England Made Me. Here we have Getting to Know the General, the story of an involvement. So this is fascinating, actually. This is, uh, he got to know uh, the Panamanian ruler. I think he was Panamanian from Panama. Uh, General Omar Torrijos. Is that how we say it? Basically, Graham Greene got to know the general. And this is the story of that. But it, it came at like a really weird time. Because this is like a time where there's like all the, you know, the Panama Canal and uh, stuff like that happening. And uh, Torrijos, I think I'm saying his name totally wrong, but he was eventually killed, I believe, was it in an aeroplane crash? It's a snapshot of history, you know, and it's really cool that Green actually got himself into these weird situations. All right, here we have Graham Green, Lord Rochester's monkey. So, Lord Rochester was John... Right, let me, let me get this right, because this is slightly confusing. In fact, let me just read the blurb. This will get it right. So it says, Restoration Rake and Poet. John Wilmot... Second Earl of Rochester was the most notorious rake of Charles II's court, famed for his lecheries, wild pranks and drunkenness, feared for his biting wit. He was also one of the finest lyrical and satirical poets of his age. Graham Greene's biography is not only the first perceptive account of Rochester's short and stormy life, but also a magnificent portrait of the flamboyant and extravagant age in which he lived, illustrated with superb contemporary portraits, drawings and engravings. Really cool, again. If I'm not particularly interested in the monarchy or the royal court or anything like that, but I still just found it fascinating to read. Just a biography, you know. Graham Greene, May We Borrow Your Husband, and other comedies of the sexual life. And um, this is just funny. I remember one of the quotes in this was, uh, the dude said to his wife, he was like, Darling, don't you ever find that you feel surprisingly erotic on an aeroplane? And she was like, yes, dear. And he was like, hmm, must be the vibrations. <laughs> Graham Greene, Monsignor Quixote. And this is a retelling of Don Quixote, which is by Miguel Cervantes. And I believe it's the most, most sold novel of all time. Not this one, Don Quixote is. Monsignor Quixote is like a reimagining of it. It's, uh, I guess it is as a retelling. We finally found a retelling. Although ironically, or perhaps not ironically, perhaps because it's a retelling. I didn't particularly enjoy this one, but basically it's because it follows, uh, you know, a priest. Okay, here we have Graham Greene, our man in Havana. This is about a vacuum cleaner called Mr. Vermold. Mr. Vermold. Mr. Wormold. I don't know. <laughs> and, um... He basically accidentally gets to be gets recruited as a spy, and this is the story of what happens to him next. And uh, he basically starts falsifying reports. Only the things that he makes up for his reports start actually happening. One of my favourites there. Graham Greene in search of a character. This is billed as two African journals. Basically says here he set two of his novels, A Burnt Out Case and The Heart of the Matter in Africa. And so he went to Africa and travelled around. And these are his journals of what happened there. Speaking of his journals in Africa and whatnot, this is Journey Without Maps. So this uh, it says here, White men were not particularly welcome in Liberia when Graham Greene made it the object of his first journey outside Europe. Drawn by the evident seediness of a republic founded for released slaves and, above all, by the primitive darkness and mystery which Africa represents in the unconscious mind, he travelled with a chain of porters from the border of Sierra Leone across the headwaters of several rivers and down to the coast at Grand Bassa. And what you got to bear in mind as well is this was... When was it published? First published in 1936. So it's actually fascinating just for like the little glimpse of history of those countries that it offers, you know. Here we have Graham Greene Reflections. This is a collection of travel writing essays and reviews. This is another one that I read as a bedtime book at the time. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just part of my mission to read everything that he ever published, you know. Here we have The Confidential Agent. Don't remember this one, I'm afraid. This is a novel. This is one of the earlier novels that I read. The End of the Affair. Now, this one I feel like I need to reread. This is basically, it is basically like a love affair set during the Blitz. And at the time, I didn't think much of it. But again, I don't really like books about romance and love and whatnot. But uh, I do feel as though if I reread this, I would enjoy it more. Here we have The Human Factor. 
apparently this does uh, this as well, but uh, it's fine. Uh, this is another, yeah, this is another spy novel. There's quite a few of these. I mean, he did do some work for MI5 during the war, and his brother Hugh was also a spy. Uh, here we have The Last Word and other stories. I guess this is some stories. Here we have The Lawless Roads. This is when he went to visit, uh, he visited Mexico in 1938. It was actually to investigate religious persecution in Mexico as well. And so um, I guess it is more of one of his religious books, but it's also non-fiction. Again, just a fascinating piece to read. Okay, here we have two children's books. So we have The Little Fire Engine and The Little Train. And again, just because he has these, I want to read them. They're not bad, actually. They're a bit dated now, but obviously they were written in like 1962 or something. So coming to the end now, here we have The Ministry of Fear. And uh, this is like another kind of spy novel. This is actually this thing that's showing you here. He goes to like a village fair where you're supposed to guess the weight of a cake. And it turns out that the guessing the weight of the cake, if you guess it exactly right, that's like the signal that you are one of the spies. So he ends up finding out more than he meant to. He was literally, literally just trying to guess the weight of the uh, cake. This is The Potting Shed by Graham Greene, a play in three acts. Uh, I found this in a second-hand bookshop in Litchfield. And uh, yeah, this is copyright 1956, 1957. Uh, produced in The Globe theatre in London which is very cool and uh, yeah I really enjoyed this play here we have the return of AJ Raffles a new play by Graham Greene here is also a picture of Graham Greene here we have the spies bedside book by Hugh and Graham Greene so as I said Hugh Greene was also a spy and this has uh, all kinds of stuff from what I remember it's got like short stories and non-fiction and all, all, all different bits, really. What have we got here? Yeah. Here we have The Tenth Man by Graham Greene. The idea here is, uh, in a prison in occupied France, one in every ten men is shot. The prisoners draw lots among themselves. And for rich lawyer Louis Chavel, it seems that his entire life has been leading up to an agonising and crucial failure of nerve. There we go. And this is a book that he wrote and then forgot about as well. As you do. Here we have The Third Man and the Fallen Idol. And The Third Man became a movie with Orson Welles, I believe. And um, it's interesting. He says in the introduction to this, what he does when he's commissioned to write a movie, or what he did, he's, he's dead now, long gone, unfortunately. But when he was commissioned to write a movie, he'd start by writing a novella that would outline the plot of the movie. And then he would then turn the novella into a screenplay. So this is like the accompanying novel or novella for The Third Man movie. Here we have Travels With My Aunt. This is just very, very funny. Basically, a retired bank manager meets his aunt uh, for the first time in over 50 years, and they go traveling together, and she's a very cantankerous old woman. Here we have 21 stories. This is actually what I started with. It's got, uh, but uh, it says, the stories in this book, all written between 1929 and 1954, share the themes that feature so strongly in Graham Greene's novels. Humor and violence, pity and hatred, betrayal and pursuit. And the reason I picked this up is because I first heard of Graham Greene in Donnie Darko when I saw that. And I got kind of obsessed with that movie. And in that movie, at some point, they're in the, the, the schoolroom. I think it's Drew Barrymore is the teacher. And she's teaching them and she's, go, she's talking about Graham Greene. Because Americans apparently call him Graham. Because th this is an, a weird thing, right? Americans say Graham instead of Graham. And Craig instead of Craig. And it really confuses me to the point at which there's a vegan YouTuber called No Egg Craig. And I was, for ages, I was like, why is he No Egg Craig? That makes no sense. And then I realised it's because he's No Egg Craig, because he's American. Ugh. Anyway, she was like, what is Graham Greene trying to tell us in The Destructors? That's my American accent for you. And uh, The Destructors is a story in this one. And basically, the, the idea behind that is these kids are like destroying stuff just to destroy stuff. Here we have Ways of Escape. So this is the companion to a sort of life. This is his second volume of autobiography. So it says here, from Haiti under Papa Doc, Vietnam in the last days of the French, Kenya during the Mau Mau and Hollywood to the making of the third man in Vienna and his time in the British Secret Service. Graham Greene writes exquisitely of people and places, of faith, doubt, fear and of the craft of writing as he found himself repeatedly at the dangerous edge of things. And finally, 
Yours, etc. Letters to the press, which is, as it sounds, letters that he wrote to the various newspapers. This was another one that I read as a bedtime book recently. And it was all right, but part of the problem was that the letters aren't introduced or anything. They're not given any context. So it's kind of hard to tell what he's referring to or what he's talking about. He, you know, it's just assumed that you know whatever political matter of the 1940s or whatever he happened to be talking about. So it's pretty difficult. But uh, yeah, I mean, I read it. And I still have some more Graham Greene to go. But that's my red Graham Greene for so far. And that is the end of this bookshelf tour. So, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of those books. Hit the like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. And I will see you soon for another one. Thanks a lot.